I want you guys to uh, join me. We gotta because uh, it's a serious battle we are facing. Amen. Serious battles we're facing in our lives. Everything we see, um, especially when we see things are not right in the right position, we need to uh, do something about it. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we're going to pray today. Um, I, I, I hope you, you get yourself just a little bit ready. Let's, let's actually do a little prayer. Um, because what we're going to talk about is some really serious, uh, some serious issue. Amen? To offend you guys. So, um, so this guy shows up with a box in his hand, right? A toolbox. And he shows up to this house and he rings the doorbell. And then uh, some lady opens the door, right? And then uh, he says, good morning, ma'am. I'm the plumber. I'm here to fix the pipe. And the woman says, um, I didn't call for a plumber. I didn't ask for a plumber. And the guy says, are you not Mrs. Jones? And uh, the, the woman says, no, I'm not Mrs. Jones. The person that was Mrs. Jones moved out one year ago, you know? And then this plumber was talking to himself with so much anger it's like they call for an emergency they say their pipe has bust and i show up they're not they have moved one year ago you know so i don't know if that joke went well with you guys but <laughs> i tried my best right um the reason for that joke it's a it's a serious joke in the sense that uh, you could have some emergency in your life and then you're calling out for God's help. You're calling for people, looking for a way out, trying to break through, trying to break free. But you don't hear your answers to prayers. Have you ever been in that spot before? Have you ever been in that spot before? If you identify with me, if you have been in that spot before, even to some points that when you pray a prayer, then you, you wait years after. You even move out one year later. Your answers have not come. In fact, your answer may be come at that time. You're like, oh... Why was I? Why did I? Why did I leave the place? Have you guys been in that spot before? Okay, so uh, at least you get the context of the joke right now. Amen. Now I'm going to read some things. Uh, sometimes we wait so long, we end up moving out. That, that's the uh, 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 the metaphor there. Uh, we forget we even prayed and waited for it. And we've tried everything. We tried and tried. We asked so many questions, and like Job and like David, you ask God, "What's going on? Where are you?" Uh, you start accusing God, start saying, "God, what's going on? Like, where, where, what's up? What, 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 what are you supposed to do for me?" You know, you start questioning yourself, questioning God, questioning others, and then, and then, you start getting furious and furious and furious. You get depressed, and then you end up thinking like this: you are seeing yourself being bitten by life, and God is just watching. That's what you think of God. You know. That's how you think of it. Some people have come to that point where they think that God doesn't care. So God is just watching them. Amen? But this is what I want to say. This is what I want to say. In this depression, in these things, in these times that you are feeling this way, it's okay. Because we are human. Alright? We are what? We are just human. God is God. Amen? So what we're going to do today, we're going to see different things that uh, that may cause the problems that we have and uh, we'll just reference it back to uh, what the scripture says about these problems amen so i don't know if you can see i don't know where the box is there's a box at the back of the, ch of the, ch the right there at the back i don't know if you guys can see that box um what happened with that box is that my folks sent me that box they were supposed to send up the the box they sent the box on the eighth of of uh of uh they send the box on the 8th of april amen i send that box on the 8th of april and then i got it on the 24th of may and guess what they paid for his predated shipping it was supposed to arrive in five days you get what i'm saying i just got it this month i got it on tuesday this what this box i brought this box to represent something because it has been a state where some of us have been myself have personally been and this just happens and and i just get administration in my spirit 
because we have been waiting for so long for something we've been asking for god we've been waiting for so long we say where is it we've been waiting for this plumber he has not come especially when it's an emergency you guys are like identify with this right you identify with this we're waiting for god for so long so so long and look at these verses Ephesians 1 3 uh, five, actually for Ephesians 1 verse 3 to the to the end of the of the of the verse it says blessed be God and our Father Lord Jesus Christ who has given blessings with, in Christ with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places in him also have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will you see that he has blessed us in Christ we know about this we preach about this we talk about this we read about this okay another one Second Peter 1 3 verse 4. As his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us into glory and virtue, by which we have been given exceedingly great and precious promises. Are you seeing the promises? Sometimes you don't see it. Is that not right? You're waiting for these promises. You see, that through this you may be particles of the divine nature, having escaped corruption in the world as true loss. We're going to come back to that particular portion. Another one, John 10 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to sorry to destroy but i have come that you may have life and that they may have it more abundantly but specifically i'm going to talk about this life what is word life here in the greek is zoe what zoe is is the life of god the very excess what god make god god jesus said he's going to give us that but we don't see those things you get a picture right that is a frustrating thing does that make sense okay because these are scriptures I read all the day, I pray about them, right? But I don't see them. Another one, Second Corinthians 5 verse 17. If any man is in Christ Jesus, is a new Christian. All things are passed away, all things have become new. We know about this one. Another one, First Peter 2 9. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, and proclaim the praises of him. A royal priesthood. I don't, see, I don't feel royal. I am not even thinking I'm a priest you see where we're coming to with this this is my own or personal i don't know if you identify with this but i believe that a lot of us are identifying with this stuff right again romans 8 28 31 as we as we do all things work together for good to those who love god we don't seem to feel that those things are happening right uh to those who are called according to his purpose for him who for new he predestined to be confirmed to the image of the son that he might be the first man among many brethren moreover he does not predestined i'll come back to that point but let's just go for now another one for us believers are really seeking power of god and these signs will follow those who believe in my name they will cast out demons they will speak with new tongues they will take up the serpents they will drink anything deadly and it by no means hurt them they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover some of us are getting sick instead of healing people you see that and most actually i say unto you who believes in me the works that he will do will greater jesus said will do greater works than he did how can you how can you top jesus works how can you do that but you are asking for this you're looking for these things you don't see it okay more psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want you know all that stuff sometimes you don't feel you see it okay 33 24 verse 10 as his divine power is given to us okay that's that, that one is a mistake okay ah that's the old version of the thing so anyway psalm you can write it down psalm 34 verse 10 i i, I don't have it up by heart what 34 verse 10 says but you can read it um but it's also another promise it's another another thing that is supposed to be something we have amen okay next thing um so the question is why don't we see what we have why have we not gotten why have we not gotten we seem to have gotten the package that package for let's just imagine this is a package right why have we not gotten this package why have we been given all this why are we not experiencing this zoe this life of god why is it that i am asking that same my question what is going on now everybody can have theories you go to this church today they say this you listen to this message you say this listen to different things all right people tell you different things you feel this is right this is wrong okay good it's fair but thing is not one size fits all this means your experience with god may be different from the experience you have with your neighbors how god helps you is different from how god helps somebody else do you understand how god cures a particular person maybe different from how somebody got cured with the spitting of and putting clay or jesus the other person jesus had to do was to say he wasn't even there does that make sense how god helps you overcome a sin one person is not the same way it helps another person just wanted to make this point clear we're going to come back to this point amen next thing so why but before we answer this why you see 
every will and inheritance is distributed according to the will of the giver. If you want to read Hebrews, it's like a legal document about all these things that we receive. Amen? So if you can do your Bible studies on Hebrews, you see it's legal document. Uh, because you have somebody that died and gave you the, the position. Right? Good. Hebrews talks about that. We must not limit our understanding to God. This is very important now. We must not limit our understanding of God, the Holy Spirit. We cannot limit it to the way we think. God doesn't think the way we think. Amen? Doesn't think the way. Doesn't operate the way we think. So this is the thing that has been frustrating us. A lot of us have been frustrated because of this. We think God is this way, but every time, because God is so great and so big, he will always tell you that he's the boss. Does that make sense? So you, may, you cannot make that mistake of limiting yourself to what somebody said about God. You always have to lean on him. It's understanding. That's why I say, trust in the Lord with your heart. Lean on your understanding. In this, in this inheritance, okay, so go back. Also, you must not limit what is called this inheritance to physical wealth, power, and money. That is part of it. Amen? It's part of it. The reason why I brought all those other scriptures, I didn't really specify on the other ones that have to do with physical things because I wanted you guys to see a different kind of spiritual blessing. Amen? We have to leave certain levels, go higher, increase in our understanding of God. So, yes, all those things, wealth, money, cars, houses, they are part of it, but there's other things like healing the sick. There's great things that we can do. This is part of the spiritual blessings and our package. Amen? Okay, so more. In this inheritance, and if you notice, I had mostly New Testament scriptures because I can list tons of Old Testament scriptures. You know, there's tons of scriptures. I said about 7,000 promises of God. I can't fit them in all these slides, but you, you can identify them and study, right? But I just specified on this ones because, again, of the covenant of the New Testament in Christ. This is really where I want to focus, right? Now, in this inheritance, um, blessings and promises, which, by the way, is no longer limited to the Jews. Because of Christ, we now have adopted as sons. So, Gentiles like us have that common wealth. Amen? So, that's something very important for us to know. What limits us, therefore... This is the reason why we don't see those things. This is the reasons. These are the reasons. So, limiters are hindrances, limitations, blockades, and generally delay. This is why the problem did not come on time. Amen? <laughs> now the joke is sinking. Okay, <laughs> Pastor, thank you for the love. We will explore these things today. Amen? Okay, what is delay? Um, delay is to put out this uh, Webster dictionary. Webster and uh, dictionary.com. Okay. Yeah. Delay is to put up the put off to a later time, defer, postpone, impede the process of a pro progress of or retard and hinder. Delay is to put up an action to linger, to loiter, the act of delaying, procrastination, loitering, an instance of being delayed, the period of amount of time which something is delayed. Uh, this is according to dictionary, uh, website dictionary, like I said, and, and dictionary.com. Um, but delay can be seen above in terms of hindrance. There is a part here that talks about hindrance, right? You see, I don't know if you can put, put it, right? Oh, yeah, see, hinder, right? Good, thank you. Hindrance. So delay is a hindrance too. You get it? You get it? Okay. Now, um, and, and, and hindrance means something that is in the way of something. What happened with this package was this. There was a fight with the courier, with the post office and the carriers in Kenya. So this thing stayed there for the months in Kenya. Does that make, you see, you get what's going on? There was a fight, there was a dispute. And this is why this thing, this, that was the hindrance there. Amen? Good. Next thing. Um, so, but personally, I want to define delay. It's, this is all good, but I just want to keep this. I, I'll define delay as to do with time not getting the stuff you want on time hmm? the things we want or what we feel we want at that particular time if we feel we need it sometimes it's not necessary for you at that time but you just feel you want it but it's still a delay amen you guys are following right now right if you have any questions along the line please ask please ask okay now before we go ahead let me talk about time they say time is money that is not totally true time is better than, time is more important than money it's not equal to money. It's more important than money. You can always get money. You cannot always get time. All right? It's free. You can. It, it's free when it's given to you the first time you are born. That's time is given to you. But you cannot restock it. You cannot go buy it again. You cannot buy it again. 
except God says otherwise. This guy, this king, he gave this king 15 more years. Right? Ezekiah, he gave him 15 years. Okay. So, so he was lucky. Um, it is given free but cannot be gotten back. Once you spend it every second, yes, I'm talking right now, I cannot get this second back. Except God gives it to me back. Do you understand it? Right? Good. Unfortunately, a lot of people do not respect it. I am one by one. I don't respect time more. I'm learning to respect time. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> okay. So, look at this. Now, before I give you all this big grammar for you guys, time is very important. That's the reason why we're always anxious about delay. Because we're getting older. Before we know, we start seeing uh, small IB running around and small pastor <laughs> running around. You know what I'm saying? Before you know, Sister Yvonne is, my daughter, come here. Let me bless you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? These are things. We, we, are, we, we are worried, especially the ladies, right? They do my clock, my clock, my clock. You guess what I'm saying, right? So this is the reason, the reason why we, we have this innate thing that time is of the essence. Now, you can define time in two ways, scripturally. You have what is called the kairos. And if you read down this grammar, it says, it's God's time, it's God's set time, it's an appointed moment in time. So God doesn't walk the way we walk. He doesn't deal with us. He told Abraham, I'm going to give you a child, you give it to him later on. Let's just uh, paraphrase it. Give it to him later on. That's God's time. Nothing to do with your time. That's Kairos. That's his appointed time. These scriptures talk about the set time at the appointed time. This one says at the, I think what they said something about the, at the appointed time, God released the inheritance. Something about the inheritance. So these are all the scriptures uh, that, and if you want these slides, if you want these notes, I said free, it's available for you. Amen? And like also you can purchase the, the tape, right? Okay. Aha. Uh-huh. Kairos is a right opportune supreme moment and Kairos is qualitative. It's about the quality, what happens during that moment. All right? Take out the word qualitative. It's perfect, delicate, crucial moment. It's fleeting writings of time and place that creates a opportune atmosphere for action, words, moments. Even weather, everything, any elements that God wants to make sure it happens, he will do it in what? He is Kairos. Somebody say Kairos. Kairos, that's a Greek word, right? Good. Another way you can say time is chronos. This is one we understand. We understand it in seconds, minutes, hours, eons, millennia, and all that, all that, and all that, right? So, chronos is sequential. It is quantitative. You count it by the amount. The other one is by the word quality. This is by what? Quantity. You see the difference, right? God's time, quality. Our time, quantity. Make sense? Good. God can use our work in Kronos to bring about, okay, this is uh, by one man of God. I was looking at some quotes about the difference in time. He said, God can use our work in Kronos to bring about transformation and bring people to himself. He's going to do this. He sets the stage by, for you to work with this, you have to set the stage by working with professionalism, excellence, and integrity. All right? We have to do God's work with professionalism, Excellence and what? Integrity. Amen? So this is the thing. We align ourselves with God to make sure that he uses his kairos working with our word, chronos. Make sense? That's big grammar, but sorry, guys. Let me go back. I'm just giving you some, some foundation for what we're going to go to, right? Good. I'm watching time, too. Now, another concept we want to talk about is our enemy. The dictionary defines enemy as a person who feels hatred for fosters harmful designs against or engages in agonistic activities against another an adversary an opponent an unfair an opposite let's just say we know the meaning of enemy because of time but these words are very important because they're going to come back again all right good now who are these our enemies number one enemy is satan you know that he says he's, he's, he's a ruling lion looking for him will devour right then the Bible, many places says enemy, 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 enemy. Right? Good. The next enemy we have is sin. Amen? Sin. Hope you guys know that sin and Satan are not the same thing. Satan committed sin. You understand? So me, I fear sin more than Satan now. I, I'm telling you the truth. Sin is more dangerous than Satan. What is sin? God has a law. He kept things in place. And then you want to go against it. That is sin. Anything. Anything. You might even think you are doing the right thing, but once you go against God's ordinances, it's what? Sin. Sin is very dangerous. 
That's why you don't even know when you're sitting. That's why we always before ourselves, offer ourselves in humility before God. Right? Good. The next enemy is our flesh. These guys, they work together, they do good work together, man. Do dangerous work on, 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 on us. Flesh. The things that I will to do, I do not. It's something that is within me. This is what it is. It's the flesh. That's your enemy. Remember what enemy is? Something that has hatred for you. Satan does have hatred for all of us. But an adversary or opponent. Even a citizen of that, en- of that nation. Even a citizen of the nation of the enemy. Is an enemy. Alright? Good. Something harmful or detrimental. That's why I only wanted to bring it. And this, uh, by these dictionaries, they recognize the enemy as a devil. So they put it in their, their own definition. The enemy, the devil, Satan. I saw it. I'm like, wow, okay. Thank God. You know? <laughs> so let's go back. Another enemy is death. Bible says the last enemy that shall be defeated is death. Somewhere in 1 Corinthians 15. I'm not really sure what. I think that's what it is. It says the last enemy that is going to be defeated is death. Another one. Death is separation, by the way. Separation. Separation. That is it. Um, another enemy is other people. Okay. I'll take that for a second. I will say something very dangerous now. Other people include society, people around you. It includes the government. Sometimes government can. I'm not saying this guy is from government. Sometimes the government can be your enemy. Don't forget. What is the definition of enemy? Anyone opposing you. Anyone that opposes God opposes you. Do you understand? People can be your enemy. Governments can be your enemy. Your friends can be your enemy too. You understand, right? Okay, we're coming there. We're coming. So, Christ admonishes us to pray. That's why we always pray for governments. We don't bash governments. We pray for them because we need them for us to fulfill God's word. We pray for our foes. This is the one Jesus said we should pray for. The other one Jesus said we should flee and hate and destroy and cancel and conquer. But these other ones, Jesus said we pray for them. It's a difference, so. Right, so don't say God say pray for my enemies. You go pray for Satan and say Satan, I bless you. No, no. Okay. Uh-huh. Next thing. So I said it. Yourself, even yourself, you can be your enemy. People around you can be society and government around you can become your enemy, knowingly or unknowingly. How do they become your enemy? When they oppose you. You see that when they oppose God, they oppose you. Okay, good. So just you have the definition of enemy. I spent too long there. Now quickly about will. Your will be done. Your will be done. What is will? We know what will is. A plan, a desire, an intent. All these things are a definition of will. But we can find five people, five major contenders for will. When the child is born, hmm, as soon as the child comes out of the womb, we have five major people that play on that child's life. We have God. Oga, God, supreme being. He has his will. The next thing is the parents, the family, uncles. I want my child to be a doctor. I want my child to be this or that, or this or that. They have their will. Your friends, even your friends are like, okay, we want you to do good, man. We want you to have this, man. You know, everybody and your loved ones, friends, um, spouses. This is all included under the family, friends, and beloved ones, right? Um, even teachers that like you, are all part of the people that have a will for you, right? Next thing is the government. This is very important. Government has society and government. So people around you, anybody outside, anybody outside this circle is part of society and government. And actually, I should use the word authority. All right? I should use the word authority instead of government. The reason why I use the word authority is because you can have authority in the schools. You can have authority even in the church. We're under a powerful man of God. We're under his authority. Do you understand what I'm saying, right? So these are the people that have will for you too. Next one is you own yourself. You have your own will for yourself. You understand? Maybe your parents want you to be a doctor, but yeah, yeah, they want to be a doctor. I want to be a singer. Maybe God actually wants you to be an architect. You see, there's all these conflicts going on. Okay. Now, the devil himself has his own will for you. All right? Good. Now, the reason why I, I okay, before I tell you the, the reason why I brought this one up. So we can see that there's three major factors. Three uh, of all these five, you can group them in three major homes. You have God, you have man, and you have Satan. God is distinguished. 
these guys here family government society authority society personal it's all on that man and then you have the devil and it turns out these three people are the ones that are making the universe spin did you guys get it that they're making the universe spin the man happens to be in the middle of the fight all right good now the reason why we talk about enemies and will is this delay can be greatly influenced by will in fact most times it is hmm? the type and content of the will this we were talking about is determined by who has that will whether it is god man or satan you guys following right depending who has that will so it's going to determine who it's going to determine the type of will it is and therefore it determines the kind of delay and what type of delay is causing you amen now let's talk about the type of delays so delays sources of delays can be defined in three levels again because of these three factors but i'm going to add a little bit of thing here where i'm going to put enemy because sometimes man can be your friend but also man can be your enemy too right good so that's why i put it god man and satan and enemies so with god's delay usually it's in the form of wait time when god says wait chill let me do my work let me do this that's god right and there's time limitations even god puts some limitations on you and sometimes it's mercy and grace periods a man usually in the form of hindrances when a man delays you sometimes in the form of hindrances they don't want you to go further from what um, peter was like lord i will not let you die something like that jesus said you know what behind me satan that was it and this is actually when peter became jesus enemy for that second for that second you know what i'm saying right good and now but satanic delays are usually oppositions real outright oppositions they don't want you to get it and don't forget what enemy means opposer right good i hope i'm not boring you guys okay please so let's just go because i'm me myself i'm really angry I'm really angry. I want to see change in my life. I want every single one of us here to be different. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, under these three, because of these three, we can actually see the main six sources of delay you can distinguish. The main six sources of delay. The first one is God. God can delay you. You can have curses and altars and covenants that can delay you. Do you get what I'm saying, right? Family curses or personal curses, altars, all these things can delay you. You understand, right? Now, we can delay ourselves. We, on our own choice, we can also voluntarily or involuntarily delay ourselves. Other people can delay us. Sin can delay us. Don't forget, sin is an enemy, right? Good. And then Satan and demonic activity can delay us. All right, good. Next slide. Let's open to this. Mark chapter four, verse thirty-five. Mark chapter four, verse thirty-five. This is going to be a case study. We're going to use this to talk about the rest of the things because we're going to use it to pray. All right. We're going to come to to, to Mark thirty-five. Anybody that is faster than me to get Mark thirty-five, please read it for us. If you need a mic, I can give you a mic, please. The mic, thank you. Yes, my thank you. Sit down. Sure. Mm. So, Mark, Mark, 30, Mark, four thirty-five. Okay. Yeah, and then to actually stop at chapter five, verse one. Let's do that instead. Yeah, Mark 4.35. Um, Where were you at? I was at Mark 4.4. 4, Mark 4.4, 4, okay. So it's Mark 4.35. So I'm actually there, so I can go ahead, right? Okay, you go ahead, actually. Because you have a different version. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mark 4.35. Mm -hmm. On the evening On that of... Evening. On the evening of the same day, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. 36. Go on, go, go on. Okay. So they left the crowd. Uh, the disciples got into the boat in which Jesus was already sitting. 
and the two came with them. All the boats were there too, 37. Suddenly a strong wind blew up and the waves began to spill over into the boat so that it was about to fill with water. 38. Jesus was in the back of the boat sleeping with his head on a pillow. The disciple woke up and said, Teacher, don't you care that we are about to die? 39. Jesus stood up and commanded the wind, Be quiet. And he said to the waves, Be still. The wind died down, and there was a great calm. 40. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you frightened? Have you still not have you still no faith? 41. But they were terribly afraid and said to one another, Who is this man? Even the wind and the waves obey him. 5. Jesus and his disciples arrived on the other side of the lake Galilee in the territory of Gerasa. As soon as Jesus got out of the boat, he he was met by a man who came out of the burial caves there. This man had an evil spirit in him and lived among the tombs. Nobody could keep him chained up anymore. God bless him. Let's stop there. But the rest of the, chap the, rest of the chapter will, will recognize that it's uh, where Jesus does is exorcism of that legion guy. He says, hey, I'm legion. You know, takes that one out. So that's it. So this is why we went to that chapter. First of all, what did Jesus tell the disciples? Let us go over to what? The other side. God is God always wants to take us to another side, another level. You understand? He wants to always take us another level. So he takes it to another level. What happens? There is a wave, there is a storm, there is this wind. All those things were going to what? shake them, deviate them, all that stuff. Can, if you were in that boat just on your own, you want to go back or you just say, okay, I'm going to die. You know what I'm saying, right? So that's what happened. But Jesus said, so I, I said it again, God wants to take us to the other side. Always. It's not a prophecy. It's, it's a reality. God always does. He always wants to elevate us. He always wants to increase us. High. He said glory to glory. You understand, right? Good. But there are these perturbations. So we're going to talk about the perturbations. Perturbations pretty much Anything that is taking you away from the or prescribed path. Amen? Okay. So let's deal with the delays. Number one, God's delay. Now, the reason why God delays is not because he hates us. So. In fact, his delay is out of love. Amen? Good. First thing is, he wants to test us and prove us. That's what happened with the children of Israel. He said that so that he would test them and know what kind of heart they had. Does that make sense? Good. Next delay that's the reason why God delays is going to shape us, conform us, shape us mold us, build us, train us build character in us and this you can think of um, in Jeremiah when God uh, sent him to the potter to see what happened with the potter right? how he would mold the thing and these guys take so much time to make their craft and it's so beautiful when it's done you guys have seen the pots right they take so much time and it's so beautiful right so this is what God does when he wastes time well, waste time, in quotes. Um, now, another thing you have, we have to remember is that it's divine order of things. Remember how we talked about Kairos, right? Remember Kairos? You say? Say it again. Quality, God, thank you. Thank you very much. That's a good connection. Quality. Kairos, quality. Right? This is time. Quality time. So, yes, she brought it up. He said, God uses this time to make quality. But this is according to the order of things. This is God's own time, not our time. That is another reason why he delay happens. Because God arranged things. He knows the end from the beginning. He arranged himself, right? Good. Now, another thing is manifestation of power. First of all, we read from that chapter. Mark 4, 35 to, to 5, uh, verse, uh, verse 2, 3, 4. Yeah, 3. It's about 3. Jesus was sleeping. Hmm? And then you woke him up and then he stopped this wave and these storms and then people are like Whoa, what kind of man is this so manifestation of power another example when uh, lazarus was dying his friend as some people say he was jesus best friend i don't know but it was jesus the bible says jesus loved him and his sisters right jesus wasn't rushing 
we said this sickness is not unto death this is in uh, i think it's in mark 11. He says this is not unto death but that the power of god may be manifested that the son of god will be glorified so this is part of the manifestation what kind of man he is he has called us to do wonders too remember what we read before he said that he has told us to do greater works right we will not do greater works until he has finished doing this one here yeah. you see that the point you're going to go to justin trudeau and tell him something that god wants him to do and he will obey you i want to taste that power that's my own i'm not about the normal everyday chicken change that's what you should call it uh, mercy drops just god will just dash you small five dollars yeah you get what i'm saying he has called us what to life and godliness so we life of god come on are you guys not happy this is what excites me but i want to see it but this is one of the reasons why i'm not seeing it right now because god is what conforming making me is breaking the pride in my life is destroying all the walls all the ideas that i had about him that is in my own pride right he breaks it but Abby and I were talking about, we're just talking how God just messed us up this past week. We don't even know God anymore. That's what he does sometimes. He will change everything you knew. Not that he will contradict himself. He's just giving you a better understanding. That's why I said again, you cannot lean on your own understanding. Does that make sense? So I won't dwell too much on this. Now, another reason God delays is mercy and grace. Sometimes God says he's going to relent. He's not going to strike people right now. God is not doing that because he's still waiting for us to repent. Some of us that jesus has not come you see what i'm saying right there's mercy in that way next one our readiness and he's preparing us for higher heights so for us to cross over to the other side he has to deal with us so he's preparing us preparation so that when we get to that stage we'll be powerful and strong amen good next thing protection sometimes we want something that is not from that god does say please not now i don't want to have you go if you have it you're going to get into trouble chill wait if we get those things, we have problem. Hypertension, sickness, cancer, all these things. Go want it. Right? Good. God wants to protect us sometimes. And also, he will bless our waiting. He wants to reward us. Amen? Good. And actually, this is the other one. This is the one that humble all of us, that humble us. He's the boss. He can do whatever he wants. He's the boss. When you come to that point where Jesus says, Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. You understand what I'm saying, right? That brings you to a point of total humility and as we sang before, total surrender. That's what it means by I surrender all. You understand? Okay, this is hard thing, so this is a hard one that we got this week. God just, okay. All right, next thing. Now, characteristics, this is how you know God is delaying. He builds love. Trust faith character is built in you right if you have a vision he will purify this is the time you will shape it make it the right way so you don't have the wrong motives amen next thing it teaches people how to differentiate between purpose and methods we're not going to waste our time doing the wrong thing you understand what i'm saying right next thing he will differentiate between spirit and flesh some things that we're doing We'll be doing it in the flesh, but now God is changing things to do in the spirit. Sometimes we're thinking that, oh, we're having these problems in the church, like this, like this. God is working with us. Amen? Amen? Good. Another thing is, it gives us flexibility. This is what we're talking about, about flexibility. When he changes our will totally, we don't see it the way we saw it before. He says flexibility. So that means, sometimes God gives us a vision. And we're focusing on the vision instead of God. So, what happens when God delays is that He changes their focus from our vision to His vision. Amen? And now, divine delays will eventually come to a stop when God is done. And then we are fine gold. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. Now, okay, we've already talked about this, guys. So, love. Okay, yeah, also more. Love, trust. I mentioned this one already. Yes. Um, so let's go to the next one personal delay this one is a big one oh. I've been the victim of this one so when I'm saying I'm angry I'm actually angry All right? I'm angry with that enemy called self and f you know that one Good. first one ignorance I people perish for lack of knowledge we hear that thing every time in, uh, in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1 it says your understanding talk about understanding 
the next thing if we don't understand what our inheritance is we ain't gonna get it we ain't gonna get it all right next thing is after knowledge you have to get understanding after understanding if you don't have wisdom to get it where to go how to seek it you're not gonna get it you understand what i'm saying this is all so james said anyone that lacks wisdom acts of god he will give it to him freely good another one is laziness see this one this one is bad though good now this other one is also a bad one determination and commitment lack of determination and commitment if you're not committed and determined to get your inheritance you're not gonna get it this is where i am angry i am determined by the grace of god i hope you guys are determined to get it because nobody nobody can look at you and see and talk to you anyhow are you a whole son of god or daughter of god are you kidding me i'm angry i'm i don't know if you guys are angry okay next thing is nonchalant attitude like whatever will be will be people say okay we're submitting to god's will don't be deceived submitting to god's will is not equal to laziness and nonchalant exactly that's not the same thing it's two different things you get what i'm saying right submitting to god's will you always want to seek what god interests you always want to hear him i will not go. you said quite frankly that's so true everybody's opinion is really sound everything is added to this one thing that you said is about the understanding that's why again remember what we talked about like you cannot hold on your own understanding you have to have the understanding from god the safest place to be is in the will of god when you have the mind when you get the will of god will of god is in the word faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word does that make sense okay and then you are able to and also to, for, again bible says like you like you mentioned earlier this is a very good point we're going to come to that one it says um to everyone is given a measure of grace a measure of faith too but you can ask for more but we see about stewardship very soon if you have the little one you have to be faithful with that and then god adds to that all right now on the other hand we're going to see later on some of them are demonic attacks that weaken you to the point that you don't believe god you don't want to fight it's coming we'll see it later on does that make sense good okay so yeah non natural attitude and lack of fight we have to have that one but it, again like i said the safest place is to have the word of god if you have god's direction then you will know whether to stop fighting or not all right good quickly because i'm looking really looking at the time is against me so sometimes we can sell off our bet right sometimes we have lack of faith and confidence they were inside the boat with jesus jesus woke up and said you guys lack faith ah, ah. first of all i'm in the boat you should know you are going to be safe then and you have been with me all this while you're supposed to do certain things by now i'm not going to be feeding you anymore this is it now i said positive worship god give you five dollars you spoil it you waste it i will give you ten dollars you understand what i'm saying right good another one pride you can't even ask somebody for help hmm? it's a big problem you see so we can't go forward this time sometimes now the worst one is no vision hey if you don't have vision hey and especially spiritual vision if you don't have if you're not discovered your purpose it's also a big one you understand these are personal delays delays caused by others unforgiveness both from you and from others jesus said forgive us our trespass even as we do what forgive those and jesus said if you have a problem with somebody go and sort it out before you come and give your offering you get what i'm saying right forgiveness can be a blockade unforgiveness can be a blockade blockade hatred whether they hate you or you hate them it can be a blockade sometimes reaping what you sow if you were mean to somebody you see the person in an elevated position they can't help you because they pay you back if they hate you they won't want to answer you they didn't forgive you you are blocked this is human not even demon another time somebody can somebody that you offended can curse you in fact some people they don't even offend them they just curse you you are this you are not going to be good for life that is part of it good you are in some of them are influenced by the devil satan can influence certain people oh, and they will block your way good and demonic activity they can so spoil if somebody wants to go get a job they will just do some kind of nonsense and they don't get a job anymore do you get what i'm saying right good we're gonna fight oh now another bad one that you don't even see coming is when you are loyal to your loved one and then he blocks you hey example 
Example. Example also, Abraham and Lot. God called Abraham. He go carry Lot. What are you doing with Lot? God, see, Jonathan would not have died if he didn't fight with Saul. He would not have died. He had a covenant with David. He wouldn't have died if he didn't fight with Saul. But he's the son of my father. I go fight with my father. He died. Jehoshaphat. He went and had wrong alliance. So he almost died. God had mercy on him. Do you see that? <laughs> Good. Now, this one is big. I'm not going to dwell on this. Pastor has preached this one tire. By now, we should know this one. This is a big deal. Sin. I guess I said earlier, sin is contradiction to God's will. So we might even think you are doing the right thing. But it's in contradiction to what God. That's why it's very good for us to listen to God. Right? Good. Sin separates us from God. It's not that God wants to punish. It's just that because he has put laws, anything that is against God is just like... He, he, this is just God's nature. So if he's contrary, it's like, oh my God, why did you do it? It's, uh, dragging you back. That's what happens. That's why, that's why you think you are being punished. It's not. It's just con- consequences. Right? Cause and effect. Even in physics, physics tells you that. Sin attracts causes and exposes us to the, to the danger and cause of delay of blessings of God. Exposes us to demons and all these things. Right? Sin can be caused by demonic influence. Some people have ancestral yokes that makes them sin. You're trying to break free. You cannot. Eh? Um, David made his, had a sin. His son, uh, is it Absalom, the other one, had a problem. Amnon. And after, Solomon uh, got 1,000 women. But You see what I'm saying, right? Somebody was talking about this sexual demon and all that stuff. Just exposing. It was really deep, right? Now, sin can be caused by demonic influence. Yeah, took, and works in generational patterns. Sometimes, when people are supposed to go to a certain level, and that family, they stop at that level. You get what I'm saying, right? There's those things. And don't forget, in Africa, most of us are from Africa. Black people. We have his ancestral yokes. Even the Caribbean. It's all those back, back in the day. The sins the forefathers committed is still affecting us. It's not fair now. You get what I'm saying, right? We have to fight. Um, sin includes pride. This one is the big one. This is why we're going to submit ourselves before God. Pride of life is a big one. Lust of the eye. Lust of the flesh. These three guys. Hey, yo, 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 yo. Satan tempted Jesus. Jesus overcame. Now, because we are of Christ, we are going to overcome. He says we are going to overcome the wall because greater is he that is in us that is in need that is in he that is in the world. And what is in the world? The pride of life, loss of the eyes, uh, loss of the flesh. Bribe preached about pride of life last week. Eh? So please get that information. So you will deal with this one. Disobedience to God. Big one. Big one. Big, if you just go say this, back up to all of us, even myself, I'm talking, I'm, we are all falling in this category. We need God's mercy and help. Amen? Unforgiveness. I bring it back again because it can hinder you. Anger, malice, all the other is, is, is sins we know. But the witness, God is the Holy Spirit will convict us and help us. Amen? So, yes, sin is this, yes, but he doesn't have power over us because we have our grace, the grace of God upon our lives to discipline us and also the extra help of the Holy Ghost. Amen? So don't worry about this one. We're going to deal with it still. Causes and covenants running. Words are powerful. God made the world by just speaking. Right? Mm-hmm. So when these causes happen, mm, the other one I mentioned was because of causes that you, you caused. But this one now is something that was back in the day. You didn't even know about it. Sometimes you are just somewhere. Somebody just says something and they block you. Good. Cause opens door and gives legality in the spiritual realm. Once a word is spoken, it gives access, legality. Because God doesn't break his law. You understand, right? That's why it's important for us to pray. We, when we pray, we give God access. He says, whatever is done in heaven must be done on earth. Right? Good access. Now, entering into covenants. Um, oh, by the way, confessions may fall under this category of opening the doors. When you say, oh, I'm bad, I'm poor, I'm failing, I'm this. All those confessions, you're going to block yourself. Hmm? Good. Entering into covenants with the wrong people. Sometimes you enter into covenant with demon possessed person. The worst one is when you do blood covenant, all those things. Wrong engagements, all those things. We saw a Joseph had issue too. This is part of it. You can enter into trouble. Um, and the worst is even when you're trying to break away from that thing, especially if you have a covenant with the devil. Eh? They, who have our forefathers, when they're trying to break away from these things, the devil don't want to let them go. All these problems happen. And it may even be worse 
than before. Anyway, next one. Um, yeah. Oh, breaking a covenant with God <coughs> can lead to curses too. If you promise God something you're broken with, it's a problem. Oh. Financial sins. Some people oppress, cheat people. Lack of tithes, all those stuff. It's part of financial sins. Right? You're not using your money wisely. It's part of sins. Sometimes you attract curses. Sometimes you give money to the wrong people. I'm careful who I pay my movie ticket to nowadays. And they complain that I want to go and support all the wrong things. I don't want to give them any more. You get what I'm saying, right? Good. Cheating, oppressing. Yeah, we talk this is part of this too, but this is a different one. Sometimes somebody doesn't is blindsided, you're gonna tell them a more lie. And then it makes them even at more disadvantage. It's part of it. It can cause problems for us. And this one is reaping what somebody sowed. Sometimes it's not what you sowed. But Bible says the cause of the fathers is not gonna happen to us anymore. In Jesus' name. Okay, we're gonna break free from this ones. Now let's open Bible, please. This is the last one. Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. Hey, this one is bad. Though. Let me read it though. If you guys are there. Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. If you are there, say amen. Oh. If you're not there, okay. Let me quickly read because of time. So, the prince of, okay, so we put it from verse 12. Then he said to me, or oh, actually, let me just go from verse 10. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my knees, and hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright now, for I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken these words to me, I stood up trembling. He said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and, be and I have come because of your words. Right? But see, the prince of the kingdom of Persia we stood me 21 days. My own words, how many days? <laughs> it was more than a month. You see this? Uh huh. More than 21 days. But Michael, one of the, yeah, I was there. One of the, <laughs> one of the chief princes came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia and came to you, and so I came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in letter days for vision is for days yet to come back to kairos right good so god has a vision has blessings sometimes it's blocked by who the prince of Persia, demons principalities and powers but jesus is seated above principalities and powers we are seated in him with christ so we're going to overcome in jesus name next one second corinthians 16 verse 9 i hope i got that right i don't think i got that one right Second Corinthians six verse nine. Let me see. The second Corinthians sixteen. I don't think. Yeah, I didn't think I wrote it right. Six verse nine. No, I didn't write it right. I'll tell you what that one is. I'll tell you what that one is. Paul said a great door was opened unto me, but what? There are many adversities. That one I remember. That one, but I, but I don't know if you have the yeah. But he said a great door. There was an open door for him. But what? There were many adversaries. Adversities. That's part of it. But he was talking about demonic influence. They didn't want him to come and deliver God's people from their bondage. Amen? Next one. Zechariah chapter 3 verses 1. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. Another version says, Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. You see this one? This, this, the, my bribe uses the word ninkompu. This ninkompu resisting us. I'm not happy with him more. Amen? Now, a last, a lot, another one. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. This is how we're going to kick off. It's how we're going to kick off all. So when I said be ready to pray, please be ready to pray. Bible says, for this purpose, the Son of Man was manifest to destroy what? The works of the enemy. So all these things happen, yes, but Jesus was manifested so that he would destroy the works of the enemy. Alright? 
in Ephesians, he's talking about how he led the, capt the captives free. Right? He even put captivity captive and let these people free. Amen? That's what Jesus did for us. So, after all that's been said and done, how do we get away from these limitations? First thing we're going to do is to humble ourselves before God. Humble yourself by the side of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Hmm? Humble yourself before God. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. These are scriptures we know. If you want those scriptures, I'm just rushing through because of time. I have them. If you want them, they're available. Humble yourself before God. This is the first thing. First thing you have to do. Daniel humbled himself before God. He said your, answer, your prayers were answered the first day after you humble yourself. If my people are called by my name, you will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Right? Good. That is it. Humble yourself before God. The first thing. Next thing is surrendering to the Holy Ghost. We cannot do anything without the help of who? The Holy Ghost. This is very important. Very important. I can't emphasize this too. Prayer. Now, what we're going to do today, we're not just going to do small, small, sme, sme. The first time, we're just going to talk to God, our Papa. In case he delayed us, let him just quicken the time. We're just begging him. That's all we're doing now. After that, every other thing we're doing is what? Declarations. You understand? We are declaring. You say, you shall decree a thing and shall what? Stand. How much more when we are together, two or three decree on a thing, it shall come to pass. Amen? Good. Next thing, Repentance. The Greek word repentance is metano. It's a change. Change. First thing you have to do is change your mind. And the Bible says, be you renewed, be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what re that's repentance starts with changing your mind about certain things. That's how you start overcoming a sin and hating a sin. You have to change it. Change your mind and then you change your behaviors. It starts within, it shows that outward. Amen? It's a trick about overcoming sins and temptations. So. Now, but again, we are relying on the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost helps us to repent too. Right? It helps us to hate sin. That's why we pray about it. Now, this one, we consciously break every natural ancestral links and tradition. We have to break it. Amen? Let go of those links and tradition. And that one is discipline. Oh, we got to discipline ourselves. If we have to fast, we fast. If we have to seek the face of God, we seek. If we see something that is a wrong thing that we're supposed to do, we turn our way. Amen? Discipline is important. Now, I'm coming to this one. Let me leave that number seven for now. Receive. Okay, let me come back to number seven. Know your rights. They say, know your rights. Because, if, for example, somebody comes to you and want to arrest you, say, I know my rights. I know my rights. You should know your spiritual rights. Know Ephesians 1 11. Know Ephesians 1 11. Know all of the promises. You have to know it and you have to call it forth. All right? Now, we have to consciously receive it from God. Every time we're praying, we're receiving all these things that are given to us from God. Amen? Next thing is, we're ready to fight and be determined. Be determined. I hope you guys are determined today. So, yes, we can start today, but don't let it stop today. Don't let it stop today. That's what I'm saying. If you want this stuff, please, I give it to you. Please, if you want it, I give it to you. Because me, personally, I'm fighting it. You get what I'm saying, right? I'm fighting it. So we're not only praying for ourselves, we're praying for our families and we're, we're going to pray for our pastor too. Because we don't pray for pastor. Pastor has been praying for us all this while. We don't pray for our pastor. Let's pray for our pastor. Let's pray for the church. Amen? Enough is enough. Put on love. Everything you do in this life, when it comes to the most important number one cardinal rule is what? Love. Love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor, you will want to rescue the people that are in bondage. And that means you have to rescue yourself first. That's love will make you do that. Love will make you, if you love God, you will do what he wants you to do. This is important. Put on love. Now, cultivate godliness, holiness, and virtue. We've been called to holiness and virtue. Godliness and virtue. Right? We, may, we read it earlier in uh, Peter, right? Uh, and it's done with the help of the Holy Spirit. All right? So we walk in hand in hand with the Holy Spirit. Remember, we submitted ourselves to the Holy Ghost, right? Now, final thought. Victory is ours. Hmm? We are short because of the cross. So when the devil, what the devil does, he will tell you some lie. And when you believe it, that's it. Oh, you're done. That's it. You're done. But we have victory is ours in Jesus' name. Now, I want to say, if that package, because what happened was this. When the package, I just got off the phone with my dad. He was telling me, he just left the office. He said that, oh, the one that they sent, they resolved the issue. The one that they sent to US has already arrived. 
that I should wait and check. Maybe next, tomorrow is going to show up. My brothers and sisters, do you know, as soon as I hung up with my dad, it was 10, 30 minutes, I heard a door rattling in on the door. It was a post office guy. Before I went downstairs, the guy has gone. You know, these people don't have patience. So he left the note. So when you receive it, be, be a little so that you will collect it. You see how fast it was. As soon as they resolved the issue, they, it came in a day. You see, our blessings, our things are hanging on the air. We just have to get rid of all these guys and you will just see them happen. You get what I'm saying, right? You get what I'm saying? And now, when this guy left that note, I should, now, if I had stayed in the house, waited well, this week, that week passed, I didn't go collect it, what would happen? They would return the package. So we have a duty to go what? Receive. And this is where works happen. This is where you now do things to receive what? The package. Please stand up. God bless pray. Let's pray. First of all, Jesus said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He recognized that God is what? The Father, the boss. At the end, he said, For then is the kingdom power and the glory. There's a consciousness. So let's humble ourselves before God. Let's ask God. He should have mercy on us. Anything we have been proud of, we have been angry at Him. All this, let's, for, let's ask God that we humble ourselves before Him. Let's pray. We believe you have been blessed. You are welcome to join us at any of our fellowships on Wednesday at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. for Bible study, Fridays at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. for prayer session, and on Sundays at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can reach us at 647-707-3738 or at 647-345-8708 or send us an email at faithhealingca at yahoo.com or faithhealingca at gmail.com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and connect with us on social media. Thank you and God bless you.